Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Tuesday. Good morning, good morning, everybody. How are y'all? Welcome, welcome, welcome. What's up? What's up? I'm so excited y'all are on here with me this morning. I got a word. Good morning. Good morning. So y'all, as everyone is coming in, as everyone is coming in, I want to uh, decree and declare some things over your life. I believe that this is the first, this is the first uh, Tuesday of September. And so the way we start September, I don't care what is coming against you. Y'all hear me? I don't care what's coming against you. God has already worked it out. All right. God has already worked it out. So I, this morning when I was getting dressed, I was like, God, what, what is something very precise that you want me to tell the people that joined me this morning on my social pages. And I heard the Lord say, try it one more time. I preached a sermon on Sunday about, no, I preached a sermon on, uh, let's see, I think it was this past weekend, or maybe it was like two weekends ago. Y'all know I preach a, a lot. So I can't remember when I preached it, but it was in this month, this past month. And I was talking about how, try it one more time. And I really feel like that. I feel like some of you have thrown in the towel. You've, 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 you've given up. You've, uh, something has knocked the heck out of you. Your breath has been taken away. And I want to start, I want to start this morning off by, um, decreeing and declaring a well-deserved break over your life. Y'all ready for this? I decree you come into a season that is devoid of intense warfare and constant struggle. I prophesy that you experience an obvious and sudden moment of reprieve and alleviation from your battles. May you look about you in this moment and find that every enemy and attack is nowhere to be found. The Bible says that life and death are in the power of your words. Your words form from your thoughts. All right? Your thoughts form your words. What's in your heart comes out of your mouth. Right? So when you're holding on to anger and bitterness and resentment, betrayal, hurt, right? Whatever is here and here comes out here. Therefore, you are forming the battles in your life. So may you look about your life at this moment. May you look about, may you look about you in this moment and find that every enemy and attack is nowhere to be found. I declare a supernatural rest from your enemies. And I speak that you enter into a well-deserved break that comes from the Lord. The month of September will be a month where you will not be fighting for rest. You will not be fighting to make it. You will not be fighting to fit in. You will not be fighting to feel like you, you matter, right? I speak the season to build and progress comes upon you. Within you arises a refreshed ability to pause and enjoy life. Come on, somebody. I prophesy over you that you will stop and enjoy life, that you will pause, that you will say la, that God will rekindle the love in your marriages, that God will bring your Boaz or your Ruth, they dead, but that, you know what I'm talking about. God will bring yours into your life, right? That God will give you answers to those prayers that you've been longing to hear. That God will bring a satisfaction into your life. That you will not be so addicted to thinking negative. 
hearing negative, feeling left out, feeling a lost, feeling alone, feeling isolated, feeling forgotten, feeling pushed aside that you forget that where God has taken you, this was all necessary. All right. I say that you pause to know, to know God is in, 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 in your life in a fresh new way. May your experience with the Lord become saturated with a sweet, gentle wind from the Spirit. I prophesy a calm serenity, gentle wind from the Spirit over your life. I say a time to take a break and recharge comes to you super naturally. Welcome to Tuesday morning prayer with Real Talk Kim. I am so excited that y'all are on here with me this morning. If you are new here, drop where you're watching from. Just drop it so we can all welcome you. My community is the greatest community on the planet. I am very partial. I have an incredible, 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 incredible uh, RTK inner circle. I'm, I actually do life with my inner circle. In fact, tonight I, te I do a teaching at seven o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time with my RTK inner circle. And this whole month we're talking about finding your purpose. We get on a Zoom call. We get on our Facebook lives uh, uh, on our private page and we talk about how to find your purpose. If you need a community, you need to go right now to realtalkkim.com. That is my website, realtalkkim.com, right? Make sure you hear that, realtalkkim.com. And I need you to sign up for my inner circle. When you sign up for the RTK inner circle, I need you to make sure you opt into the emails so that you're getting the communication from me to you because we give you Zoom, Zoom links and all the information of, my of, of 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 how I'm teaching you every Tuesday night at seven o'clock I'm pouring into my RTK inner circle. I will also be in Tennessee this week uh, this this Friday night and Saturday morning. Then I will be back at my church, Limitless Church. I pastor a church, Limitless Church, sixteen fifty three Highway eighty five South, Fayetteville, Georgia three zero two one five, across from White. Water High School, 10 and 11.30. I'm also starting a new campus. October 23rd will be our first service downtown Limitless Atlanta. Limitless ATL, 6 o'clock, October 23rd. All the details are coming, so stay on the lookout for that. And it's going to be very limited seating, so y'all going to have to sign up. Where do I go in RTK to Zoom? app or inner circle. So Lulu, what you do is you make sure that you are in the, you're opted into the emails. Now, if y'all are not getting emails, it's probably because you've opted out. If you've opted out of the emails, when you signed up for the RTK inner circle, you need to go back in and opt in because my team sends you. You also need to check your spam, check your spam, uh, your spam folders because all the information could also be in the spam folders as well. All right, um, but it is, uh, my, my team will send you out a link today to tell you how to get on the Zoom tonight. All right, it starts at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I also, if you can't get on RTK Inner Circle, you can watch the replay. I send out the replay. I put it in my RTK Inner Circle, RTK uh, Facebook private page, the RTK Inner Circle pa uh, uh, private page under the feature tab. All right, all of y'all need to be in my RTK Inner Circle. It's $20 a month, but I pour into you. You will not stay stuck in my presence. You just won't. I'm telling you, y'all ready to get into it? Y'all ready to get into it today? I'm going to go from Psalm 8 and 5, Psalm 8 and 5. All the details about me are on my website. Uh, emails can be found in your profile settings. Thank you, Christina. Go to your profile settings and, and, and your, the way you signed up for the RTK Inner Circle Y'all, listen, I also have an app. Go to your Google Play Store, your Apple Store, and look for the RTK, uh, Real Talk Kim app. And that app is everything about me. You ain't got to go look for me everywhere. I'm real excited, though, because I'm rebranding everything right now. So we're having photo shoots. 
Um, I got another photo shoot tomorrow. I had a photo shoot last week. We're, uh, we're getting our podcast syndicate. Uh, my podcast is already syndicated. My podcast is on iHeartRadio. My, my podcast is every single platform podcasts are found. I put up two podcasts a week. Two podcasts a week, Real Talk Kim Podcast. You can literally put me in your pocket and listen to me all day long. Yeah. And um, I'm rebranding all of it. So in the next 30 days, you're going to watch everything unfold so different. I, my whole, everything about me is going to look different. Uh, all my, my store is going to look like Neiman Marcus. It's just really exciting. So you need to be connected to somebody that's growing because where, whoever you connect to is where you're going. So y'all need to take an evaluation today and ask yourself, do I want to, do, 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 is this where I'm going? Are they going anywhere? Are they growing? Are they elevating? Do I want to go where they're going? Because you are going where you go. Where, whoever you're hanging out with, that's where you're going. It's a prophecy into your future. So I'm not saying I'm the only one going nowhere. Because I think, every, I think there, my whole circle is going somewhere. I got a, a whole community full of bosses. Right? Because I hang out with bosses. I ain't got time for people that ain't going somewhere. Except, you know, of course I pour into people every day. And then they start going somewhere. But you got to ask yourself... You know, are these people that I'm allowing in my life, are they, you are who you hang out with, for real. Yep, I love the podcast now. I uh, have the options to be, yep, I'm going to do video. I just, I'm doing my, my, we're setting up a studio right now. We'll be virtual, it's really cool. Yep. All right, y'all. I also have a brand new book with Harper Collins that will be out August 2023. Uh, my manuscript is being turned in in a couple of days. We finished it just about. And it's got, the book is called You Gotta Get Up. This is my first really huge book. I'm really excited about it. So it'll be out August 2023. All right, y'all ready to go? Y'all ready to go? Let's look at Psalms 8 and 5. Psalms 8 and 5. And it says, you have crowned him with glory. Y'all go ahead and share this with somebody. Somebody needs this this morning. Y'all might be doing great, but somebody is under their covers today. My, my, my son had someone in his um, community uh, commit suicide last week, a day before his birthday. And so there are people in your world that look like they're happy, that they're not happy. And you, you need to be sharing the love of God with them. You need to be, you can't, you can't just be walking around saying people know I'm a Christian. The fish on the back of your car, that's not enough. Like, you got to be Jesus. Like, you, you literally have to be Jesus. You literally have to be uh, communicating with Jesus every single morning so you have the heart and mind of Christ so that you can be Jesus to a lost and dying world. And when people around you acting like they good, they, some of them ain't good. And so share this with somebody this morning. It says, you have crowned him with glory and honor. When life, y'all listen to me, when life throws you a curveball, you have the right, you have to have the right perspective. You have to have the right perspective. The thing that I tell my church, the thing that I tell my community, right, is that when life hits you, because it will, life is going to hit you. It's going to hit you hard. That's just the way life is. The Bible says that, that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. It's just going to happen. Some things that you didn't count on are going to happen. But the way you navigate through those seasons is the way that you're going to elevate or stay, right? The way you navigate, the way you see things, the way you process things, whether your connection with God is strong enough or you're waiting on someone else to help you get up. When life throws you a curve, you have to have the right perspective. When dark times linger, you got to be able to get up and say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I might be walking through a divorce, but I ain't staying here. I might be, I might feel like I'm having a meltdown right now. I'm going to have a meltdown for 24 hours and then I'm getting back up again, right? Somebody might have died in my family that I thought would never die, that would thought would be here forever, but I'm going to get up and carry the legacy, right? You got to change the narrative of your life. A bad break is going to happen, right? A bad break, a disappointment, a divorce, a sickness, nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop you. You got to keep hoping, keep hanging on to faith because God didn't crown you with favor and give you a royal robe so you could walk around anchored in doubt. Every single time that life has given me 
a, a hard break. A lot of them I made myself, right? Like really, if we stop and look at it, a lot of the bad things that happened in our lives were because of a bad choice, right? Because we were getting ahead of God or we wanted, uh, we wanted a, a, a miracle quick, right? A lot of times, like if we're really honest, it's not always spiritual warfare. It's us getting ahead of God, right? A lot of times, no, sometimes our pain is a due to someone else's, someone else walking out on us or someone else, you know, right? The pain may not be our fault, but the healing is our responsibility. So we have to decide to get up. We have to decide as long as I ain't dead, God ain't done. I've got to keep hoping. I've got to keep standing in faith. God didn't crown me with favor. He didn't give me a royal robe so I could walk around anchored in doubt, fear, bitterness. Being hopeful is about your soul being anchored to the right thing. And if you're not anchored to hope, you will become anchored in something else. Hence the reason you need liquor to go to sleep, you need drugs to go to sleep, you sleep with 15,000 different people, you got soul ties, you got devils. All those things is because you don't know who Jesus is. You are connected to the same people with different faces because you are not anchored in Jesus. You're not anchored in hope, right? You're not anchored. You're anchored in everything else but the one, the greatest of all, right? Jesus be the center. Y'all ever heard that song? Jesus be the center of it all. Jesus be the center of it all. You ever heard that song? From beginning and the end, uh, he is always the way it goes. But that's a song, and every single time I'm like, I want to throw in the towel, I start saying, Jesus, you are the center of it all. When I start losing hope, I know it's because I've allowed myself to start swaying a little bit away from knowing who Jesus is. You can become anchored to discouragement. Anchor to everything that is tainting your perspective. So at the end of the day, at the end of the day, when you when you feel yourself tired, stressed, worried, angered, bitter, tired, you tired all the time, right? You just want to go to work, come home, go to bed. You got to take an inventory of your own insides, right? Everything in your life is sour. Everything in your life is sour. I know people who are anchored in bitterness. You can see it on the outside of them, right? They're so focused on who hurt them, what wasn't fair in life, bitter. They're poisoning people. They're infecting people everywhere, all, all around them. There is that, that, that. They think everybody owes them something. Y'all, nobody owes you nada. Nada. People don't owe you nothing. Your own spouse doesn't owe you making you happy. That's an inside job, right? You got to do a talk to yourself. You hear me? You got to talk to yourself. Kimberly, get your butt up and praise your way out of this. That's what I do all the time. Yo, it is easy to become a victim. I know people that got more anointing in their fingertip than I got my whole body. But their parents raised them to give up. I remember when I was raised in Morgan and Lincoln, and I would put them in sports. They'd be like, yeah, mama, we want to we wanna play football. Then about the fifth week where they had to practice the whole summer, one of my kids would be like, I want to quit. I'd be like, sorry, that's not your portion. You can't quit. I would never let my kids quit. They would cry all the way to practice and I wouldn't let them quit because you can't walk out of something because it's hard. You know how I learned that from my dad and mom? You can't quit, Kim. When I walked through a divorce that I thought was going to kill me, when I walked through a divorce that I thought was, yo, y'all know how many times I hear people say, I can't believe you're still going, girl. I can't believe it. I can't, yo, I pastored a church. I got up and preached the day after my daddy died. And people are like, I don't know how you did it. And I'm looking at them like confused. Like, I didn't have a choice. When you understand that you don't have a choice, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I saw struggle throughout my youth, but parent, uh, parentally, right? How many of us can say that? But the enemy tells us we're the only ones that had a hard childhood. 
We're the only ones that's been cheated on. We're the only ones that got molested. We're the only ones that had drug addict parents. We're the only ones that struggle with addiction. We're the only ones. And that is a lie from the pit of hell. You're not the only one. Your portion is not to quit. Giving up is an option, but it ain't your doggone option, right? You got to, you, and, and your mom and daddy might have let you quit too. I know someone right now with more anointing in their fingertip, and they literally gave up. Gave up. And now they're going to their grave with no freaking legacy. Gave up. Because they couldn't pull it together. Why? Because they were selfish. I want everybody to do it for me. I ain't mad. I'm mad at the world. The world tainted me. The world wasn't there for me. I can't forgive nobody. And at the end of the day, when you can't forgive and you're mad and jealous of everybody else in life because you had a hard life, right? All of a sudden, you're drinking that kryptonite of unforgiveness and you are dying with nothing. When you could have gotten your butt up. When you could have finally got up and said, Kimberly, shut up. I talk to myself. Y'all know how when I'm preaching, I'm like, Kim, preach. Preach, Kim. Y'all know why I do that? Because I don't need y'all to amen me. You know why? Because I have learned to worship. I have learned to praise my way out. I have learned to not let what they say about me get in me. I have learned that people will always have a decision and their the opinion. And their opinion can't make me or break me. Their opinion can't, they ain't paying my bills. I don't care who believes what they say. They're, they're, all the world coming together cannot stop the anointing of God on my life. There are 7.7 .7 billion people in this world. Why are y'all letting a season in your life to find your lifetime? That's on you, boo, right? Everything's sour in your life. I know people who are anchored in bitterness. They're so focused on who hurt them and what wasn't there that bitterness has poisoned their whole entire lives. And you become anchored in self-pity and go around with a chip on your shoulder, always thinking about how unfair life has been. Being anchored to any of those things is going to keep you from your destiny. So my question today is, do you like your life? Do you like your life? Do you, did, 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 you, did you get excited this morning when you woke up? Or were you like, no talkie, no talkie, no coffee, no coffee, no talkie, no coffee, no talkie. Did you already wake up and yell at your kids, get, Jesse, get downstairs. Huh? Y'all kids done scared this morning. Y'all got your kids all the way at school this morning with, with ulcers in their belly. They, are, they're, they got, they got, they got, they got bubble gum in their belly this morning because you were yelling because you woke up in a bad mood. Huh? Because you had to drink a whole bottle of wine to go to sleep because you ate your life. It ain't their fault that you can't get your emotions together. So this morning, it's on you, boo. You don't like your life? Change it. Joy is an inside job. Somebody said, I don't have kids. Then this wasn't for you. <laughs> if you ain't got kids, this message, that little, that little line right there wasn't even for you, boo. You hear me? Today, get up and praise your way out. You hear me? Somebody said, I'm a little of both. That's okay. At least you got one foot in and one foot out. <laughs> At least you ain't just laying in your misery. You ain't drinking, you ain't just drinking Kool-Aid of negativity. You just, and y'all listen to me. When you're so used to having, just being negative because you were raised that way, it takes a minute. That's why you got to get around people like me that'll tell you, get your butt up. What you doing? Yo, I'm the type of person that if I see something out of alignment as a pastor, because I'm a pastor, I'm a pastor, I'm a coach, I'm, 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 I carry lots of hats. If I see something out of alignment and I know that me as a pastor and as a coach and as a, all, all those things, as a friend, I know that I'm leading properly. And I know I'm not one of those that will nurse you. You're not going to, you're not going to sit here and let me, I'm not going to nurse you. I know that I'm teaching biblically and I know that I'm teaching you the word of God. I will literally, listen, I will literally have you uh, sitting over there and I'm like, figure it out, go figure it out. Because if I always spoon feed you, 
If I always spoon feed you, you'll never learn the lesson. My parents little would kick me out of the, you know when a, when, a, when, a, when, a, when a mama bird is ready for her birds to fly, they kick them out of the nest. That's what I do. That's what I do. I'll kick you out of the nest and I'll know I'm there. I'm not going to let you drown, but I'm also not going to spoon feed you. You're going to figure this thing out. If I still see residue on, on people in my life and I'm like, oh, you going back there again? I'll let you go figure it out. You're going to go figure it out. I'm not, I'm not going to do it for you. I'm not going to leave you, but I'm also not going to spoon feed you. That's not the kind of coach I am. We're going to figure this thing out together. I'm never going to let you go, but I'm not going to spoon feed you. You going to figure. I, and I'm also the type that won't confront you. I make all my clothes. Somebody just said, where'd you get your clothes? All of my clothes are on my website, realtalkkim.com. I'm not going to spoon feed you, but you're going to figure it out. You hear me? I'm going to help you overcome your petty. That's what I'm going to do. Okay? Listen to this. And here's my last scripture for today. And then we're going to go. Philippians 4.19. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. God has seen everything that's happened in your life. And the, he's seen the injustice. He's seen the bad breaks. The person who did you wrong. Those people cannot pay you back. They cannot make you whole. No matter how good a person is, they can't give you everything you need. Only God can meet your needs. He said he will give you beauty for your ashes. <laughs> he said he will give you beauty for your ashes. He said he will pay you back double for unfair things that have happened. So you've got to quit looking to people to make it up to you. You've got to quit trying to get somebody to apologize to admit they were wrong. Hello, somebody. Yes. You got to quit looking for an apology, right? Uh, to give you what you don't have. Hello. When you let people off the hook and quit trying to make them perform perfectly and keep you fixed, not only will their life be better, but your relationships will improve. That's y'all's homework today. Let people off the hook. Does that mean condone their bad bad behavior? Absolutely not. Does that mean stay in an abusive relationship? Absolutely not. Does that mean try to try to respond? Uh, Y'all, I never respond to nobody. I responded for the first time yesterday to somebody because they had no they have no clue, right? And then I felt bad for responding. And then I was like, screw it, whatever, right? I had to go talk to God. Why did I even feel like I needed to respond? I don't even know that doggone person. You got to start asking yourself. You got to ask God for conviction. Ask God for conviction and say, God, if I get out of line, then convict me so that I can let people off the hook. So I shouldn't cuss out the lady that said somebody something hurtful. Well, Shay, you can cuss out. Look, uh, you the one that's gonna stand before God. You can cuss out if that if it makes you feel better. But really, in reality, cussing out somebody only makes you look crazy. Really. You, 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 when you cuss out somebody, you literally allow somebody that don't even matter to bring you out of character. And then you made yourself look crazy in front of your kid. Because your kid now thinks that they need to cuss out everybody that hurts their feelings. So really what you need to do is you need to go have a conversation with your child and say, you see that woman's behavior? Don't you ever, ever, ever make anyone feel that way. The way that woman just made me and you feel, that is not of God. Don't ever, ever make anyone feel that way because that is not godly. That's what you should do. All of y'all that cuss people out in front of your kids should be ashamed. You need to pray for God to convict you so that you do not direct your kids, right? They don't even deserve it. Hurt people, hurt people, but heal people, heal people. And you know what? I'm going to tell y'all something else. This is definitely not a con condemnation word. I never, ever, ever want y'all to feel like when y'all listen to me that I'm condemning you because I'm not condemning you. All right? I never, ever want you to be like, oh my God, that's terrible, man. I did that. I've done that. I'm a terrible person. God got on that cross and stretched his arms out wide for you and said, it is finished. At this moment, you can make up in your mind, I never want to be that person again. I never want to cuss out nobody ever again. Right? Y'all, cussing just ain't even in me. 
It just ain't even in me. Like, it's just not whatever's inside of you comes out of you. Cuss words, like, and somebody's like, well, whoever said they were cuss words anyway. Cuss words come out. Cuss words are intended to say when you are angry. So cussing is related to being angry. Anything that makes you angry has control over you. All right? So it's not necessarily that saying a cuss word uh, is like, you know, uh, whatever. It, but, but, but it's the, the, the heart posture when you say the cuss words. Okay? So if someone, it, when you say a cuss word, it's because you're mad. It really is. Like even just now I say screw it. Like why do I even have to say screw it? Why did I just have to say forget about it? Like why do you think I didn't just say forget about it? Right? So now I need to go ask myself why did I have to say that? <laughs> That's the kind of person I am. Because I never want to disappoint God. I never want to disappoint y'all. Y'all, the Bible says that, 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 that don't let your good be evil spoken of. Don't let, I can't allow my good to be evil spoken of. So I always got to check my heart posture. And even though something's not important to me, doesn't mean it's not something that would offend someone else. That's how come you always kind of say, I'm sorry, even if I, cursing is not even in me either. It's just not in me. Like, I don't walk around wanting to say the F word or the A word, but it's because Jesus is in me. It's because my heart is right. Y'all, now I'm not even lying. Like, about four years ago, I was a little ratchet. And I got a shirt that says righteous and righteous, righteous, <laughs> ratchet, righteous. I've got a shirt that says hood and holy. Like, I, I'm giving you permission to be both, but you need to be more holy than hood. You need to be more righteous than ratchet. Right? You need to be holy, holy ghost, all of those. Right? And you are teaching your children how to act. You're teaching your children. Like, even if you're walking through a divorce, y'all, you are teaching your children how to come out of a broken situation. They're watching you. So if you're walking around cussing your ex out all the time, your kid's going to walk around cussing your ex out. They're going to walk around cussing everybody out. God is trusting us to be a light. Right? All right, y'all ready to pray? Y'all, come on. Some of y'all need to pray them devils out of you. <laughs> some of y'all need to pray them cussing devils out of you this morning. It's not condemnation at all, man. It's just not condemnation. It's just not. It's conviction. And and really, when you cuss, it just makes you look so. But we all like, girl, you messed up. Like, 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 you okay? Some folks cuss, smiling with the joy too. Karen, but my point is, like, you're right. You're right. And and Karen, I've never been. Y'all know me. Karen just said, you know, some people cuss joyful. That's fine. Y'all know I don't judge you. Go cuss. If you want to cuss every other word, go go do it. Like, I'm not your Jesus. At the end of the day, Karen, I'm not your Jesus. I will never, I don't judge you. I ain't here to put you in heaven or hell. I'm here to get your hearts right. Because God's going to come back. God's going to come back. Y'all, y'all, God's going to come back. There is a heaven and there is a hell. And I ain't saying I know what I, I just say get your heart right. things. If you ain't walking around bitter, ugly, nasty, hateful, uh, uh, eating up with anger, eating up with bitterness, trying to get people back, uh, trying to hurt people, it, 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 uh, nothing comes out of you mean. Right? If you get your heart right, nothing comes out of you mean. If you get your heart right, you don't even gossip. If you get your heart right, if you get your heart whole, you hear me? If you get your heart whole, you don't want to be trying to pay people back for the wrong they've done to you. So my job is to get your heart right. Once I get your heart right, and once I get you whole inside, me and Jesus, then everything else falls into place. Now, if you still want to cuss beautiful after that, that's all. That's Do you, boo? Do you. You can sound like whatever you want. Do, do you. I am not your Jesus. All right? I don't judge you. You don't judge me. I'm just here to get your heart right at the end of the day. 
Lord, we just thank you for your power. We thank you for your strength. God, we thank you today for this incredible word. Karen, you're so funny. We thank you for your word that you brought forth this morning. God, we thank you that you are you are breaking chains off of us. <laughs> oh, we thank you today, God, that we are no weapon formed against us shall prosper, that we are the head and not the tail, that we are the top and not the bottom, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, that, God, we're going to be lenders and not bars. We're not going to walk around bitter. We're not going to walk around spewing on people. We're not going to walk around bleeding on people that didn't cut us. Lord, we know that the pain may not be our fault, but the healing is our responsibility. Lord, we want to walk around full of joy. God, today, don't let our eyes see anything that is going to corrupt our hearts. Guard our, our, our eyes. Guard our, ear, our ears. Guard our hearts. You said in Proverbs to guard our hearts because out of it flows the issues of life. Lord, when we're healed, we ain't got to walk around telling people off. When our hearts are healed, we ain't got to walk around saying, this is me. Take it or leave it. No. When our hearts are healed, we are mature in, in faith and in joy. We have the propensity to be like, you know what? I know you're hurting. I love you. If you ever need me, I'm here for you. We, we, we always, when, 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 we're, when we're healed, we ain't walk around looking to be offended. When we're healed, we find joy in everything. When we're healed, we are grateful. When we're healed, we bring sunshine everywhere we go. So, Lord, reveal the things on the inside of us that need to be healed today. God, we love you. We love you so much. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Lord, thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Thank you, Lord, that you are answering prayers that we forgot we even prayed for. <laughs> God, thank you that you are answering prayers that we forgot we even prayed for this week. That, God, we're walking into our Amos 9, 13 season. It won't be long now. God's decree said things are about to happen so fast. Our heads are about to spin. Blessing upon blessing. We won't be able to keep up. Lord, we stand in Proverbs 3. This is trust in the Lord with all our heart. Lean not to our own understanding. In all our ways, we're going to acknowledge you. You will direct our path. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all our hearts. Lean not to our own understanding. In all our ways, we will acknowledge you and you will direct our paths. So God, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to stand in you today. We're going to stand in you. We're not going to get sidetracked. We're not going to get bitter. We're not going to get angry. We're not going to get resentful. Today, Father, we thank you for your blessings, for your anointing. God, we love you so much. And Lord, today, thank you for peace. I just send out peace all throughout these airwaves, all throughout my Facebook family, all throughout my RTK family, all throughout my Instagram family, all throughout my TikTok family, all throughout my YouTube channel, all throughout my Limitless God. I just thank you today that you are just dispersing. You are working all things. Romans 8, 28 says you are working all things together for our good. God, we thank you today that you're healing broken hearts. You are binding up the wounds. God, you said that. You said you are a heart healer. Today, we're going to give you all of our broken pieces and you're going to heal us from the inside out. Today, God, today, God, today, God, Lord, I bind suicide. I bind that, that de demonic spirit telling us that we don't matter, telling us that we don't matter, telling us that we are not worthy, telling us that if we were dead, it would be better, that there's no hope for us. I bind that devil. We serve you an eviction notice in the name of Jesus. An expiration date has been assessed and you are being escorted out of the building. You cannot touch us. You cannot touch our family. You cannot touch our children. Uh, right now in the name of Jesus, you cannot touch our children. You cannot touch our spouses. You cannot touch us. 
I come against every ounce of infirmity that would try to attack our body. Cancer, you have to go back to hell where you came from. High blood pressure, cholesterol issues, lupus, fibromyalgia, tuberculosis, HIV, all kinds of diseases, blood disease, brain cancer, all of it, everything, everything diabetes, dementia, all of it is broken at the root in the name of Jesus. You have to go back to hell. No sickness, no depression, no psychiatric sickness in our minds. It cannot stay in our families. Addiction has to flee in the name of Jesus. Addiction, cigarette addiction, cocaine addiction, drug addiction, alcohol addiction, it has to flee. Lord, I bind that depression in the name of Jesus. It has to flee. It has to go. It has to go. It has to break off of our families. That depression, I come against depression right now in the name of Jesus. It has to go. I come against every lion, foul demon that is trying to attack us, to attack our families. Anybody that tries to raise their hands or their mouth at us, it will ricochet back off of us and onto them. Anybody that tries to come against us, anybody that tries to come against us, anybody that opens their mouth and lays their mouth on us, it will ricochet back on them. We will not own it. We will not take it. We will have the three-second rule. Every time we hear, hear something that goes against what God is saying about us, we will de de reject it immediately because those are the things that cause depression. We will not believe the lie of the enemy. Devil, you are a punk. You cannot have our sanity. You cannot have our sleep. You cannot have our finances. You cannot have anything because you have been quarantined in hell with all of your stupid little demons. You cannot touch us. We are overcomers by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So right now, in the name of Jesus, we're taking back our peace. We're taking back our joy. We're taking back our sanity. We're taking back our sleep. We're taking back our money. We're taking back, we're taking it. We're taking back our confidence. We're taking back our names. We're taking it all back. We are not pitiful. We are powerful. We are not dead. We are going over. We are not done. We are coming up. We are not depressed. We are overcomers. So Father, right now in the name of Jesus, wherever our loved ones are, wherever our children are, whether they're in school, going to school, in class, wherever our spouses are, at work, in the bed, wherever they are, Lord, I thank you that everything that is attached to us is anointed. Everything that is attached to us is blessed. Everything that is attached to us is holy. Everything that is attached to us has to line up to the word of God. Everything. Our minds are healed, our hearts are healed, our feet are shod with the preparation of peace, and we are anointed. So God, we call our minds into the authority of Christ. We will not worry about a thing, because every little thing will be all right. And Lord, I pray right now for marriages. I speak life into marriages. Devil, you are a liar. You cannot have marriages. One will put a thousand to flight, but two will put ten thousand to flight. I speak to marriages. I command marriages to heal and thrive. I speak over marriages that they will flourish. I speak over marriages that they will be overcomers. They uh, marriages won't just be thrown away. I speak to marriages right now that love will overtake them in the name of Jesus that they will be bonded, that they will be connected, and anything trying to penetrate to break those marriages cannot succeed. Lord, I pray that all stress for marriages is healed. I pray all words and people coming at them and trying to cause discord will be broken. And Lord, I pray an extra, an extra guarding around marriages, God. 
Lord, allow marriages, allow our people on here, husbands and wives, to begin to put their spouses first, to protect their spouses, to love their spouses, to honor their spouses, to respect their spouses, and to never open a door for another individual to come in and break up their marriages. And Lord, I pray that you give us discernment and wisdom to know when a devil is on an assignment to cause us to stray. I pray over people dating right now that God, you would be in the dating and anything that is, if we're, if, if anybody is dating, that they, they're dating somebody that ain't supposed to be in their lives and God, you would reveal the devil and you will allow them to have the courage to break it off right now, Lord. Because I believe this is a season where you're bringing love into people's lives. And I believe that when you are bringing one and bringing people together, that, you, that, 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 that the enemy does not like relationships. So he tries to bring counterfeits. So, Lord, if there's counterfeits, break them up. Break them up. So that we are not sidetracked like Delilah and Samson. God, we just thank you right now that our purpose will not be delayed. We will be purpose pushers and our purposes will not be delayed because of our own brokenness. In the name of Jesus. God, we love you. We love you, God. Thank you, Lord, that we are ready. I pray for my singles on here. That, God, you are getting them ready for their spouses. The ones that have been praying for years and years and years and years for their spouses. That God, you're going to bring their spouses into their lives and their spouses are going to lead them to Jesus and not away from him. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for my community out here. That God, you would give us such a hunger for you. God, let us fall in love with you. Let us love you more than anything. Oh, Father, let us be in love with you. Let us be walking with liquid love, showing the love of Christ to everybody we meet. God, let us be revival carriers. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that we are hope dealers. That, God, we are light in this dark world. That we lead, that we win people to Jesus every day. Everywhere we go, we ask people, do you want to accept Jesus as your, as your personal Savior? In Jesus' name. And that's how we're ending this today. If you're on here and you don't know who Jesus is, and you say, Kimberly, whatever you did today made me feel something. And I want whatever you're talking about. What I've been talking about is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. The El Shaddai. And if you want to accept Jesus as your personal Savior, I want you to drop a one. It takes two minutes for you to accept Jesus in as your personal Savior. Once you accept Jesus into your heart, He comes and He lives right here. And when He lives right here, you then have the same power that raised Jesus from the dead living on the inside of you. And if you would like to accept Jesus as your personal Savior, I want you to drop a one. Drop a one in the comments. Man, YouTube, y'all going crazy. So many people are dropping a one right now. Y'all, I, I, y'all, on our prayer calls, we have 250 people come to Jesus. Now, here's what you're going to do. Once you accept Jesus, you're going to go download the Version app. Y-O-U-V-E-R-S-I-O-N and get on a Bible plan. Listen, it's free and learn the Bible, all right? Because listen to me, when you accept Jesus as your personal Savior, you now have the power to pray for yourself. You can lay hands on yourself and say, self, get it together. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And make sure that you find a church in your area. Find a church. Make Jesus a priority. Two hours on a Sunday is all you've given to God to get a community and get Jesus in your heart. If you don't have a church in your home, join Limitless. I have an e-church online. Every Sunday at 1130, tune in to Live. All right? On my YouTube channel, on my YouTube channel, all you got to do is go to realtalkkim.com or my, or my app. And, and, and my YouTube channel is Real Talk Kim. 
and I I air everything. This is live on YouTube right now, right? I'm, I'm, I'm live in my services on every single one of my social platforms. Make sure that you are putting Jesus a priority, all right? That's what you got to do. Y'all ready for this? Hey, Lakin. Y'all ready? Y'all, my prayer team is on here as well. My prayer team is on here right now with us. My prayer team is on here. They're praying with you. Y'all ready? Repeat this prayer after me. Father, I receive you as my personal Savior. I repent of all of my sins. Forgive me. I ask you to make my heart your home. I love you, God. I say yes to you. Thank you, Lord, for leading me and guiding me all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Wow! Welcome to, that's it, that's it. Now listen to me. You ain't never got to tell God you sorry again for anything that you've done. You never, ever again have to repent. It is washed away. You are clean. You are clean. And you know what? You have the power now to go lay hands on your kids. Y'all can anoint your houses. Y'all, in fact, in fact, I will put up a video of how you can go through your houses and anoint your houses to be blessed. I will do that in the next few days. I think I might have it on my YouTube channel. I'm not sure. Y'all need to go subscribe to my YouTube channel because I have a lot of great teachings over there. My podcast, both of them are Real Talk Kim. All you got to do is Google Real Talk Kim. And I will teach you how to be a follower of Jesus. I will. And I will teach you how to be very, very blessed. God wants you to be very blessed. God does not want you to be on the struggle bus. All right? I love y'all. Thank y'all for hanging with me for the last hour. I love you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The app is called Y-O-U-B-E-R-S-I-O-N. You version. It will put you on a plan for beginners where you read the Bible every day. The Bible is your promises. The Bible is your GPS. The same way you put an address in GPS to go downtown, is, 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 that's what the Bible is to you, okay? And it's giving you your promises, all right? I love you guys. Make sure you're going to realtalkkim.com. Subscribe to everything in my life because I'm going to be your teacher of the word for the next few months to get you built up. Get your, it's, it's almost like Papa spittage. We're going to get you full of Jesus so that you are an overcomer. I love you guys so much. I see y'all loving on me. I love y'all. I will see you in the morning, 8 a.m. We're doing this again. I love you guys. Every Tuesday and Wednesday, I lead y'all in prayer and Bible study. I love you tons. Make today awesome. Remember, get out of your feelings. There's no money there. Get out of your feelings and get into some healing. I love you guys. See you in Inner Circle. I will see y'all tonight. 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All of you need to go get in my inner circle. Invest $20. It's $20 a month. That is 60 cent a day for me to help you. Listen, if you don't put money on yourself, you know why it's 20 cent a day? I mean, I mean 60 cent a day? Because if you don't invest in yourself, you don't do it. And I want you to put in the work. All right? I want you to put in the work to better yourself. And if it's free, you won't do it. How bad do you want it? All right? I love you guys. Hey, I will be in Tennessee this weekend. I will be in, uh, I think it's Chattanooga this weekend. Uh, Friday night and Saturday, me and Mimi preaching. Then I'll be back at my church Sunday at, at 10 and 1130. Limitless Church across from Whitewater High School in Fayetteville, Georgia. Then I will be coming to San Diego. I'll be coming to... Uh, oh my God, I'm coming everywhere, y'all. I'm very busy. Look at my schedule on my website, realtalkkim.com. In fact, go download my app. Go to your Google Play Store, your Apple Store, and download my Real Talk Kim app. All right? I love you guys. Also, all of you in my inner circle, get your tickets for the retreat, the RTK Inner Circle Retreat. 
All right, right here in Atlanta with me. The RTK Inner Circle Retreat is January. The, the, what color is the app? It's pink. Real Talk Kim, go. Um, my, my, our RTK Inner Circle Retreat is January 12th, 13th. I will be baptizing then. All right? So go get your tickets. All the details. I need to put, Valerie, if you're on here, I need to figure out how to send out the details through the email again for the retreat. Because a lot of people don't have Facebook. So I need, to, I need to probably send out a mass email of information. We also are going on a cruise in our, ret our retreat. Is, uh, our RTK Inner Circle is going on a cruise June 2023. So y'all need to be getting your tickets for all this. Saving money. Save your coins. All right? And make sure you're in the building. Because there ain't nothing like a retreat with me. I'm telling you. We baptize inside. Yeah. All right. I love you guys. Where is the inner circle retreat? In my, in Atlanta at my church. Yeah. In my, in, in Atlanta. All the details are realtalkkim.com on my app. Real Talk Kim Go. I got a podcast, Real Talk Kim. Uh, just Google. Yep. Google. Please do because I've tried to find it and couldn't. Okay. So a lot of people are trying to find my info. I'm going to work that out. I'm going to work out finding info about me better. I know it's pretty hard to find out stuff about me, but we're fixing all of that right now. Everything about me is being rebranded. So you not have to look and search for everything about me. <laughs> I'm going to give you all hyperlinks. Really, in reality, I will go, uh, if you're on Instagram, and I know a lot of you are not on Instagram, in, the, in my link tree, all the links are in my link tree, um, in, my, in my bio. So I will go put the RTK inner, oh, the, oh, yeah, I'll put the RTK Inner Circle link, but you've got to have the password to buy a ticket. But you will have the password if you're in the Inner Circle. Yep. All right. I love you guys. Bye. I can't wait for you to see me either. I'm going to hug you, Melanie. Love you guys. See you tomorrow. Love y'all.